let me what kind of window capture one quick second here get the word out check on our device over here make sure we're going we got a red dot that means we're alive so guys it's been like a week and I've been dying to bring you all this episode and unfortunately uh, life happens you know uh, been a busy busy week so we are finally going to get around to the 2023-2024 season for the Florida A&M Rattlers uh, I'm expecting a good year we we asked the coach for a or I'm sorry coach is right here we asked the AD for a little bit easier schedule he delivered you can see over here on the right hand side of the screen uh, we got some I don't want to say gimmies with this team uh, because absolutely nothing is a gimme uh, I'm sure there's uh, there's days and weeks that they could lose to you know the local YMCA squad or you know pick up basketball or whatnot but uh, you know we don't have a ton of road games like we did last season so I expect improvement there I expect improvement out of the roster uh, you can see here we've got our recruits coming in if you don't remember from last episode we've got Joseph Fuller who is in the top hundred four-star guy uh, here Hughes and Nickel they both slipped down a little bit in the rankings uh, I never really thought they were you know, huge huge but um, they'll, they'll still be all right let's see just looking at some of the notes on these guys you know hard-working kids we're bringing in hard-working kids here at Florida A&M it's a lot of hard work getting these rattlers up and going uh, you know so got that tremendous work ethic we like it you know, we can only do so much so guys let's get this season going see what we get record wise uh, we've been up for a couple minutes people should be falling on in here shortly so it's our inbox and let's get some of these games going guys as always uh, our recruiting's done our scholarships are filled so today I'll be bringing you guys this entire season we'll sim all the way through the end of the year We'll see if we get any kind of job offers. Uh, I do expect this to be a much better year. So if it holds true to my expectations, we could start seeing job offers. Our, our abilities are getting up there where we might start seeing it. But we haven't had anything yet. So I don't expect to get, uh, even if there's more, I don't know that there will be anything interesting. But as always, uh, I'll throw it out for consideration to chat anybody that's on live with us and we'll make the call. Uh, but you never know. We might not get anything interesting. There might not be a decision to make. Let's get these games, though. That's what I've been waiting for. I've been waiting a week. You know, I was trying. Uh, honestly, part of what I was trying to get done, I spent a lot of, um, you know, last the end of last week, trying to get a new computer ordered and all that good stuff. Uh, I wanted to bring you this save as or this uh, episode as the first episode in. Uh, what's up, Agalia? Yeah, I'm back. I wanted to bring you all the, this episode as the first episode on the new PC that I built as sort of a, uh, you know, symbolic, we've turned the corner, everything's better now kind of thing, and it just didn't work out. We've had some back order issues, so uh, still on the old rig here, but uh, we'll see how the weekend goes. This may be the last stream on this computer. So we're winding it down on the old PC. This is still one that I built. I actually ordered the parts for this one in 2009 and built it then, and it's still kicking. Still able to stream, only a little bit of upgrade since then. So hopefully the one that I just built, you can see it over here, sort of behind me over on its side. Uh, still don't have a power supply, but it's mostly together. Uh, hopefully that one lasts me another 10 years. So first game of the year, guys. We're at home against Central Arkansas. Let's kick it off. And right out of the gate, 13-point win. Lewis Hinton was 16. Lewis Hinton filled it up. Griffin was up there. I didn't even see the third player. Hey, uh, how's your how's your save going, Agalia? Uh, let's double-check. I think we set the depth chart before we left last time, but let's double-check that. Yes, looks great. We've got Stewart doing our basically third guard duty. Johnson and White. Uh, Johnson's doing the big man duty and White sliding down and playing some backup three. And then we've got 
all of our you know, highly rated recruits along with the transfer there, Villarreal. So looking good as far as that goes. Let's bounce back over here. I do want to see the box score. I want to see who that third high score was. I'm sure somebody out there already saw it. So I know we had Hinton. I know we had, let's see here, points. Hinton had 16, Montgomery with 13, Griffin with 18, and Villarreal had 19. That's what I wanted to see is if Villarreal had a good game was playing up to what I was hoping. And here you go. Here's Knox, the one, the freshman that I told you I was excited about. You know, he went for 9-6 and six in his first game of his freshman year. So definitely the way we wanted to start out the season. Uh, obviously a little bit concerning there being at home, still giving up 76 to, to much smaller schools. But at the same time, still a lot better than losing, you know. You can only ask for so much. You took over Colorado that hard, buddy. Miguel, you said he, he think he broke his Colorado save. Oh, man. Sometimes it happens. And you get on a you get on a string of good luck with the recruits or something like that. I'm missing all the things I usually sit here and fiddle with while I'm on camera. Yeah, that sounds broken. He, he said he recruited all top five ranked recruits and his whole roster is four and a half or five stars. That does sound a little bit broken, buddy. Uh, it's probably about time to bump up that recruiting difficulty would be my guess. That's one of those things, though, when you get a school that good out in the West and you don't have a lot of competition. Like That's why Gonzaga keeps on winning these saves. That's why like every time you'll notice if you're not in the West, there will be some like powerhouse that just comes out of nowhere uh, and starts – dominating out west so i don't know why arizona doesn't do better more often second game of the year oh second win of the year another double digit montgomery villarreal still did all right uh it looked like craig was it craig johnson i think that's our our rotating big man so but again that was a 20 point win yes it's at home against a smaller school but guys i i think Unless I ever started off with a win, I think this is the first time we've ever been above 500 in this save. And not only that, uh, we're 2-0. and So I do think we have a couple of road games coming up here. But we're 2-0. Uh, this is, you can't ask for anything better than that. You know, the guys that we would expect to be playing well are already playing well. And um, <laughs> we got two wins. What more can you ask for? Game's all about... Wins and losses. Oh, Mary Mack with a nice little 25-point win over Texas State. Paul Heyman. If there's any Paul Heyman guys out there. Hey, I'm doing all right at the Ville. We're going to make it happen. We ought to be... Uh, so, Agalia in chat's asking about our multiplayer league, online league. And uh, tonight, we may... Well, we'll definitely have some commits tonight. Um... And then tomorrow night, well, I guess, like, when we download tonight, we'll get some commits, and then we can do our first round of in-home recruiting. And then tomorrow night, we'll get a tidal wave of commitments. So tonight and tomorrow night will be big nights. Uh, Louisville's actually got three scholarships this year, and uh, I'm optimistic that I can pull in all three of my top targets. Uh, I think that at least two of them should be pretty safe. Uh, I'm also pretty excited about um, opportunities at NKU, which is my third school. And then uh, I've got Ryder as a second school. They only had one scholarship to offer this year, and I've got a prospect I'm very excited about, but I think uh, Power 5 school may be uh, making their presence felt. So we'll have to see how that actually ends up playing out. Uh, of course, in that league, we've got all of the recruiting, um, all of the coaching, the head coaching skills maxed out. Uh, and, you know, I've got a pretty good recruiter. So, uh, you know, if if that other Power 5 school isn't a, a user player, then I might be able to beat the AI out of that one and get Ryder a big win. So let's see if we can get our third big win here with Florida A&M. Guys, if we start this season out going 3-0, and it's going to be looking great. So we got Omaha coming into town. Oh, we pulled out the one-point win. Look at that. Villarreal, Montgomery, and Hinton all throwing down. 
look at Lewis Hinton. You know, he was one of those guys that when he came in was kind of like borderline back and forth. And now you know, here he is as a senior. We don't have him starting. You know, how is he? We do have him starting. He, we had to. That's right. I forgot. We only had one small forward on our roster last year. Uh, well, we had two. One graduated. The other transferred out. So we do have Hinton starting at small forward. But man, he's putting up some points, looking good. Agalia says Kentucky's got three scholarships as well. Uh, I've I've had a look at your roster and uh, some of the guys you're leading on. Uh, you definitely have some uh, a whole lot of guys with a whole lot of interest in Kentucky in that save. Um, you know, I was looking through it, and I was like, man, I would love to have this many guys interested. And not only interested, but guys that have Kentucky number one on their list. So, you know, you, you've got an advantage going into it. Uh, most of the ones I was looking at were regional, so you've got a good location advantage on it. You've got a lot of prestige at Kentucky. Your coach obviously has all the advantages in the world. So uh, I expect... I expect you to pull in a monster class with that Kentucky team. Uh, I'll be disappointed in you if you can't knock off uh, Matt or Justin and, and take over that top spot in the recruiting. I think uh, I think overall, most people would assume uh, you know Matt with Wisconsin pretty much won the recruiting last year. I think I was a strong second uh, this year. Uh, I'm just not targeting as highly touted recruits. Uh, I need to build a little bit of depth. Uh, and a, a couple of guys that are going to stick around. So that's why I'm a little bit more optimistic on the prospects of picking those guys up. But, again, there's no guarantees. You know, everybody's – I've got uh, – GM Games has my videos up. You guys all know how I recruit. You know what I'm looking at. Uh, you can see on here how I'm playing. So no big secret as to what I'm doing. I'm just trying to build up some depth, trying to bring in some guys that will be around uh, and have a little bit of experience for me so that, you know – I'm. I don't like getting into a point where I'm 100% reliant on landing one of those top 10 recruits, and that is a make-or-break thing for my team. So Florida A&M is 3-0. Long Beach State is coming in winless. Let's see what we've got. Another win, 12 in a 12-point win. Montgomery leading the way again. Guys, Florida A&M is 4-0. I told y'all it was a grind. It was going to take a while. Our coach was terrible. We could not get in recruits. But I told you, I told you the second it was turning. And here we go, 4-0 to start this season. So, again, we haven't won on the road. Uh, we did have one very close one-point win. So, we're not dominating by any means. But most of this roster is young. Griffin's a sophomore. Villarreal may be a junior. Uh Hinton is playing out of position at small forward as a senior, but this is the first year he's done much, and we've got that top 100 recruit coming in behind him. <laughs> Buddy, I'm telling you, we're going to get it done. We're going to get it done eventually. Uh, and then, of course, Montgomery and Knox. Uh, Knox is a freshman, and Montgomery is a sophomore. So we've got one junior, one senior, and, and three underclassmen, and, and we've got one of those... Uh, senior that one senior has got a really strong replacement coming in so uh, Florida A&M is in a really good spot they'll be in a whole lot better spot if these wins like you know it goes back to my theory about how all those players were so angry and wanting to transfer out you know they were all mad at the coach and they're all starters they're getting playing time uh, and one of them didn't have a great attitude you can see I got my my guys signed their LOI so everyone's eligible so, uh, if that theory about, you know, just really needing to win some games pans out, we'll be all right. The concern is Montgomery uh, has a pretty, uh, he's pretty upset. Uh, he could transfer, and, and then you never know about you know, the other guys that we have. So, we'll see. We'll see. We're in a good spot for this year. We're going to enjoy this year. Hopefully this translates into something in the tournament. So here we go on the road for the first time. We're headed to James Madison. Uh, they will definitely be putting their dukes up. <laughs> Sorry, i got to get some corny dad jokes in there. Uh, so let's see. On the road for the very first time this year. And we pull it out again. Guys, we're on fire. 
hitting nearly with the double double. Griffin going off the Florida A&M Rattlers, five and zero to start the year. I told y'all it was turning. I told you, and they're going off. So, five and zero. Yeah, the current recruiting class on A&M, we've got the four-star small forward who's top 100, and then we've got two other guys. I, I just I bounced into it at the very, very beginning of the stream, but let me do it again real quick for you. Um, we've got the four-star top 100 here, Joseph Fuller, at the small forward spot. That's who's going to be sliding in uh, to that position that Hinton's playing right now, Hinton the senior. He'll, he'll be gone next year. Uh, but Fuller should be a very nice replacement with Florida A&M's first top 100 recruit, obviously, in this save. Um, then we've also got Chris Nickel, another small forward. He is a JUCO. Uh, he'll be giving us a little bit of depth and experience at that position. And then we've got Jason Hughes. Uh, again, I, I like. I don't ever want to be in a spot where I'm stuck, where I'm absolutely reliant on bringing somebody in, especially at a smaller school like this. So Montgomery, with those attitude issues, you never know how that's going to pan out. Let's see if anything's changing on these guys yet, or if I still got a still a team full of frowny faces. Although th that might be going up. We'll keep an eye on that. The coach relationship was 26%. Now Montgomery is the one I said, uh, you know, he's not friendly. He's not going to have a good team relationship. So it would have to be coaching relationship to keep him around. But some of these other guys are, are fairly friendly. They're good with the team. And so like Griffin's at 33. So let's remember those numbers and keep an eye on it as we go forward. Yeah, that's the uh, Fuller, the small forward there, was just a, a massive get for Florida A&M. And, and he signed his LOI, so, I mean, he'll be here. You know, outside of some kind of horrific injury, you know, early next season, well, he'll be the man there at the three. Um, so, you know, uh, this is – Florida a and in a good spot now. They're in a good, strong spot. And this – at this point, you know, my coach is moving into the um, respectable – the respectable area of the attributes. So, he's getting close there. Record-wise – we're gonna we're gonna be strong here going forward. Uh, so at this point, we're we're riding for the A and M. We're pushing them as high as we can get them until the right, uh, whether you want to call it mid major or, or a low power five or whatever, until the right opportunity presents itself. This should be much less of a grind. Uh, we ought to have a little bit of fun with it here in the Mid Eastern Athletic Conference. Let's see Gonzaga at number one. You know those. If you got a high prestige school out west, man, you're gonna do all right. <laughs> He's making fun of me in chat. This is gonna be the year I get a new job. I'll never get to see that top hundred recruit. You never know. We we can always keep an eye on him. All right, so let's see here. We're going on the road once again to Portland State. And now we get our first defeat of the year. Hinton still put up a game. You know, our normal guys still put up a game, but we fell by 15 on the road against a decent Portland State squad. It had to end sometime. I didn't figure we were going undefeated. Guys, I couldn't be happier with the 5-1 and one start. We've held our own at home. We've even picked up a win on the road. Uh, so, still looking all right. Uh, the guys that we were hoping would be great have still been great. Now, I haven't seen you know, Knox has been perfectly fine in his role as a freshman. I'm good with what he's done so far. I would love for him to pop up and be one of those high scorers or one of those big rebounders. Uh, you know, I expect that to happen throughout the season some, but it's not a total surprise because he is going, you know, you got uh, Hinton there at the small forward who's naturally a power forward, so he's probably eating up some of those rebounds. He's got the experience, so he's you know, he's getting into scoring position, that sort of thing, better. Uh, and then you got Montgomery, who's just a total beast down there at center for us. Uh, again, sucking up rebounds, sucking up post opportunities, that sort of thing. So, you know, Knox laying back a little bit isn't a shock, I don't suppose. All right. We've got a couple more emails. Those should just be scouting reports. We got Longwood coming into town. So we're back at home. Ooh, I think I just saw somebody drop 37 points in there. What was that? Nice. 
All right, the Longwood Lancers coming into town. Let's see what happens here. They're, oh, what a brutal schedule for them. Look at that. They're 2-4. and four. Every single game is on the road. So, you know, a dangerous team. They've already picked up a couple wins on the road here this season. Not today, Longwood. Look at Hinton. Look at Montgomery and Griffin. Man, all three of those guys, like, outside of, um, shoot, that rotational big man and maybe Villarreal once. I don't think anybody else has popped up in the top three. It's just all day. Hinton, Montgomery, and Griffin. I mean, those guys are killing it so far this year. It's really nice to see. Uh, so that moves us to 6-1, and 5-0 and oh at home. So let's just see how long we can keep that up. We're not. We're just at December 6th, guys. We're seven games into this year. If you remember, you know, even... Two years ago was a struggle to get 10. Was it last year that was so bad? I think one year only had nine wins. I think that was last year. So this is just going to be a totally different kind of season. Um, we're almost to last year's win total. And we're not even halfway through December. So we're looking good. Now, again, as every year, I've always said, you know, it depends has the conference gotten stronger? Is the conference a little bit weaker? With these mid-majors, you never know exactly what to expect year to year. So we'll see how it plays out. But assuming that we can even just be average in conference, uh, we should have a much, much better year this year than we have in the past. <laughs> Waiting to hear the hissing noise? <laughs> We're going to get there, buddy. we got to wait till we get to those big conference games. Let us, let us get to Bethune-Cookman. You know, they always make me angry. All right, so headed on the road to Troy. They're 4-2. and two. They're undefeated at home in one game played. And they beat us by 11. There was Villarreal showing up. There was Mike Stewart, the rotational guy. And we got a team incident, which is always terrible. How about we hiss at this guy? S Tony Jack? About George Villarreal? All right. Uh, let's go deal with that guy, because I doubt he's even playing. Nah, uh, you need to keep your mouth shut, buddy. I don't want to hear any of this nonsense. You're terrible. You're not even playing. <laughs> One point, he's, he's played like 10 minutes on the season. Uh, what was that you said? Yeah, there is something to worry about. All right, so he promised to work on it. All we really need is a little bit of a, yeah, we'll try to do better, coach, and I'll move on from that. God, the coach relationship's gotten worse. But we have lost a couple of games. We'll double check on Griffin. See how that goes. Uh, it's obviously changed a little bit since the last time we looked at it. And I think, what, did we go one and two since the last time we looked at it? So, like, if each one, uh, you know, if each game was a point or two, that would make some sense. So, let's see. Hopefully, we hit a nice another nice little winning streak and we can see how that's changing what's up Chris glad to have you back buddy we are six and two in here that's what's up Florida A&M Rattlers Agalia said he wanted to hear the hiss so I got a six and two uh, going even better than I thought it would in the early going <laughs> Keep talking, man. Keep talking. So six and two. Man, if we could get... How many more games do we have out of conference? If we could get to ten out of conference, that'd be crazy. We do have a another handful of road games coming up, though. So, um, I think... What was it? Seven and six. Home versus road. So we've played most of our home ones. It'll be a little bit more road on the back half of this out-of-conference schedule. Uh, but still, even hold serve at home, we'll have a really nice out-of-conference uh, record. So we don't want to get ahead of ourselves, certainly. Uh, last year, if you remember, last year started off pretty good. Uh, we were never above 500 necessarily, but... Um, you know, we definitely don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but I like this this year's roster a lot better. There we go, 18 points. Look at Lewis Hinton with 34. And Khalid Knox 
just got a knee injury. Let's see how bad this is. Because that is certainly one thing that could derail this season is an ugly injury. You know, while I'm pretty happy with the roster, we don't have depth. All right, sprain finger 15 days. He's still 90%. We're not going to worry about that. Let's check Griffin again after a win. He's still hovering around 32. Montgomery is almost certainly going to transfer. That's just getting worse and worse. Oh, I don't know why that is. I, with Montgomery, I understand you know attitude, but I don't understand how the coach uh, relationship is so bad. So we'll ju we'll just you know hopefully keep on winning and hopefully one of those turns around a little bit. So it's, it's going good, Blazer. You can see the record, buddy. Uh, seven and two. We've already. I, I think we're. Where are we? Five and. 5-0 and oh at home, 2-2 two and two on the road. So it's looking pretty good so far. Seven wins in the out-of-conference is great when you consider that last year we only had nine wins on the entire year. Uh, although, you know, I, I do think we picked up like five of those wins out-of-conference. So, you know, while I certainly think the worst of the worst of it is behind us, the worst of the grind is behind us, our coach is getting better, our Rosters getting better. Uh, it's certainly not over with. I don't want to. I don't want to say that by any means. But it's definitely, you know, we, we've completed the climb to the top, and now things should start to get easier. You know, we can move downhill a little bit instead of every single day just being such a grind. So we got New Hampshire coming in, uh, three and six. They are one and four on the road. One and five now. Look at Villarreal, Montgomery. Khalid Knox, even hurt, goes 6-8. and eight. Oh, moved on to Colorado State. Blazer in chat said he moved on to Colorado State in his save. Yeah, um, he also said, you know, works just real life, got a little bit busy. Uh, same over here. I've had, you know, some work things pick up. Some other hobbies and stuff have taken up a little bit more time over the past week or so. Uh, so that's why... You know, it took a took a little while to get this one, this episode out, even though I was really excited about it. I actually wanted to do it. Like, I didn't want to stop last week when recruiting was done. I wanted to roll right into this. Uh, it's just, you know, real life calls every now and then. But I almost got my new rig built. It's sitting back here behind me. So uh, hopefully this is the last stream on this old one. And you know, we'll be we'll be able to push a little bit you know, higher quality. Uh, real soon, ideally. We'll see how that works out. <laughs> the arch nemesis, huh? Uh, I like I'm partial. As a Louisville fan, I'm a little bit partial to Colorado State. Um, I know that's where uh, John L. Smith coached football for a while. Uh, I actually believe that's where we got our old athletic director, Tom Jurich. Uh, so the Rams, other than you know, doing us dirty in some bowl games and putting a beating on us. Uh, outside of that, you know, they've done us pretty well over the years. We've gotten more from them than they've given us, so I'll take it. Yeah, he's running his state. He's running his save at Colorado, Blazer. Apparently, he's taking over the whole NCAA out there with the Buffaloes. All right, so here we go on the road again, and is this, this is starting off, wait a second, 10, is Cal State Bakerfield in conference? Nah, I don't think so. Couldn't remember on Cal State. All right, so we're headed on the road again. Um... Roll the dice. Yes! 80 to 69. Villarreal still going off. Montgomery still doing it. Guys, look at this. I think we're above 500. Like, before this season, I had not been over 500. This season, I believe I'm over 500 on the road. So this is just absolute. Um, so far in the non conference. 
this is just absolute redemption for us. We've already matched our win total from last year, and we're still in December. So we're we're looking strong. We're looking to make a big push in conference, and then we've got to go out. And if you all have seen any of the other videos we got up on GM Games, uh, check out the YouTube or, or the old Twitch and that sort of thing. But if you want to you want to get it done in this game, you got to do it in the postseason. So it's nice to have a, a good regular season record. But we got to go out and win some games in the conference tournament. This year, hopefully, we'll be in one of the other postseason tournaments as well, and we can make a little noise in that. Ideally, we make the big dance this year. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, Blazer, uh, I do envision playing out some games. Uh, I've talked about doing that on a different save. Uh, I've got a Louisville save that I do play the games out on, and I've seriously considered streaming that at some point. Uh, I've also, what I thought about was on this save, once I got my team up and going, you know, you can only do this part of it so often. Eventually, I like to get into it and, and get attached even a little bit more to the players. Uh, I can't lie, doing the streams and that sort of thing, I have gotten more attached to the players just because it takes a little longer to, you know, talk about it, recognize good performances, that sort of thing to get you through the stream. But um, absolutely, I'll play out some games eventually. We fall at St. Francis, who's not a very good team. It's a road game. Uh, the only reason... I'm disappointed is because we've been having such a good year. I, I thought that we could take care of a bad team, but obviously we're still very young, very inconsistent, uh, and still very much trying to grow. At least we're not Tennessee losing to unranked teams, right? So we are at 9-3 and three through 12 games. I think we got one more. Do we have one more before the, the new year? Let us see. I'm just glad we don't have stuff like this, like Cortez Evans, three points, and that puts him in the, like, why is he on that list? That's the kind of stuff I'm glad is hopefully in the past on this Florida A&M save. Hopefully we don't have to put up that. If we go to, a, or when we go to another school, hopefully we don't have to put up with any of that you know, at that school. So let's see what we get. See if we get another game here while we're still in 2023. Yeah, we got Dartmouth coming in to our home arena. So one last, I think this is probably the last one. One last 2023 game against Dartmouth. Yeah, uh, Galia was talking in chat about us streaming some Louisville, Kentucky games. We've definitely talked about that. Uh, go yell at Chris. I uh, had asked if he would uh, reach out to some some people that he knew and see if he could figure out how to do a dual streaming. I've seen it on Twitch. You can do dual streaming. Uh, I'm just, you know, uh, myself as well as GM games. We're still newer to Twitch. So I don't know exactly how to get the two talking heads at once, but Justin and I definitely wanted to do the two talking heads and do some commentary on games. And I think Louisville, Kentucky would make a great one. Uh, Cause I'm going to beat Agalia pretty fairly, uh, pretty bad. Let's see how it goes. Dartmouth coming into the Alfred Lawson Jr. Multi-Purpose Center. Eighty-five, eighty-three. Look at Craig Montgomery with the double-double. Griffin dishing the ball, picking up five assists. And I think we just closed out our non-conference home schedule undefeated. We're not into the new year yet, and we've already hit ten wins. Guys, this... In our first season, I think it took until like the last game or two to hit 10. Then it was a struggle the next year to hit like 12. Um, last year was awful. So I'm pretty excited here. I think we're in year five now. So we can go back and check the year by year here toward the end of the stream if you'd like. Uh, but this is just by far, you know, we've already almost eclipsed our, bet, our highest wins in a season. And we haven't even started conference play yet. So, feeling pretty good, I'm not going to lie. The Rattlers are going to get you. I'll get something that shakes eventually. I don't think we have any more games this year. If we do, it ought to be a conference game. 10-3, and three, even... You know, if you'd ask me, best case scenario, 
eight and five, maybe nine and or nine and four, maybe ten and three. Wow, ten and three is looking good. <laughs> All right, into January we go with only three losses. That's insane. That's insane. Loving it though. Uh, it really worked out asking the athletic director for some easier games at home. That's for certain. Let's take one last look while we're here and see if any of those guys' relationship with the coach got better. Because I know we've won a, a handful of games here. Uh, we've got like three and one maybe. So one last look at that. And if it's still trending poorly, I'll just hope that you know we. Uh, I'll just assume Montgomery's gone and hope that. You know, the rest of the guys make friends with their teammates or something because they all tend to hate me for some reason. Probably because I'm hissing instead of rattling uh, would be my assumption as to why they don't much care for their head coach. But, you know, not much I can do about that. Let's see here. So Griffin went from 33 to 32 and now 34. So his is going up. His team relationships actually shot up quite a bit, I believe. What's Montgomery look like? He's up to 25. I think that's gone up. Now his team relationship is still going down. So I don't know, you know, even if I get, even if I can move that coach relationship up, I don't know how high I have to get it, like numbers wise, like how high I'd have to get it to be safe. Uh, or if there is even is an amount, you know, it looks like his team relationship is probably going to be zeroed out by the end of this year. So uh, I feel a lot worse about him, but I feel a lot better with Griffin looking the way that he does so far. What's Dixon? Yeah, he's all right. He's also not friendly and wants to play, and he is probably not getting enough minutes. So he may not be very happy with me right now. Uh, is he? I can't remember who our oh our rotating guard is the really highly ranked one. So, yeah, Dixon's probably not getting as many minutes as he would like. And, you know, with the, the record going the way that it is, yeah, he's way down here. Let's at least move him up. But I'm not going to change the minutes around. You know, just given the way the season's going, uh, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So, I'm not touching it. We're going we're gonna to move forward as is into this conference play. Um optimistic that the more of these games we win the better chance we've got of keeping this team together uh, and then we'll just cross our fingers and see what happens next year but you know we're we're bringing in better recruits we're steadily improving i'll really like the direction of the save man we got a handful of days here with no games i'm anxious to get back on the court make something happen Come on, guys. <laughs> Jeremy Andrews filling up the stat sheet over here. <clears throat> Got a, it's been a week since we played a game. I think we last played. We might have played on that Thursday or Friday for that last uh, that last road loss, right? I don't know. I just sit here and talk, and then I forget anything I said two minutes ago. So, um, <laughs> who knows what happened? Tulsa. Tulsa back again. They're always around. Big 15-point win at Tulane. So, here we go. Starting off conference play on the road at Maryland Eastern Shore. So, they look like they're 500 so far this year. Uh, I think it said that they were winless on the road. Ooh, got some guys raining baskets out here. Yeah, so we're headed to the Heitch Athletic Center. The Maryland Eastern Shore Home Arena. Home of the Hawks. A 500 record. Let's see. Oh, they're own one in conference. That's not the road anymore. That's right. All right, so out on the road. Fall by 17. Uh, the usual suspects are all around. It looked like Griffin and Montgomery fell off a little bit points-wise. Villarreal was still there, but he didn't have any help. Putting the, putting the basketball through the hoop, and we fall for our conference opener. 
But again, road games against teams that, you know, what I was saying, that's a, Agalia asked what I'm drinking. That's a Coca-Cola there, buddy. So nothing exciting whatsoever. Um, but yeah, we fall on the road. Uh, the conference could be a little bit better than the teams that we played in, in the out-of-conference schedule. So not a shock if, you know, we go closer to 500. But I'd love to be, you know, two, three games over 500 in conference that would just be a huge step in the right direction. But still, I mean, anything, this is, if this, we lost every game from here on out, it's a step in the right direction compared to what happened last year. And with the roster that we have, the games we got going forward, uh, I think we'll win our fair share. We need at some point, is there anybody that, uh, Anybody in chat remember? What was the guy that already transferred out? Was that Eric Giles? Do you all remember where he went? We need to check him out. It's an unfinished basement. I'm sitting in my basement. I, I want to eventually get like a green screen kind of thing. Uh, I think there's actually software that will do a green screen deal. Uh, but it won't work with this old as can be computer that I'm currently on. Uh, so once I get the new rig set up, one of the many things I need to check out is whether or not the software can generate that green screen automatically. Otherwise, I need to get out and just buy a big green curtain or something. Uh, I know how to do it. I just don't have the material, and I haven't been going out for a you know, green sheet for my Twitch stream. hasn't really been a life and death priority. So we got Howard coming in. Howard is 3-11, 0-1 in the conference, coming in. Uh, we've gone back and forth with them over the years. Seems to be season sweeps every year, one way or the other. <laughs> so let's see. There we go, 21-point win. Khalid Knox throwing up double-digit points. Hinton back in the mix. So always a good sign to win home games against really bad teams. It looks like Howard is a really bad team, and we took care of business. The nice 21-point win there. Gets us back to even in conference. We're still holding steady at home, which is a wonderful thing to be doing this deep into the season. So I, I couldn't be happier with the way that we've played at home. Let's see what we got next, guys. We're 15 games into this. Uh, normally, you know, we'd be about halfway through and you know, 30 games and out. But uh, this year, I think we've got staying power, not only in our conference tournament, but also in some other... Uh, you know, ideally the NCAA tournament, but if we don't win our conference tournament, we're not getting that large. So uh, we could certainly get you know, CBI or CIT or uh, whatever. I, I get those two initials mixed up, but we certainly be in the mix for that. So it looks like we've got another conference road game uh, against another bad team, uh, at least with a bad record. This team looks 3-13, and 13, I believe. I did not see if they've won in conference yet or not. North Carolina A and T, zero and three in the in the MEAC. So let's see if we can get some of those very elusive road conference wins. Oh, we came so close! Look at Mike Stewart put up twenty nine points and then got hurt. Hey, probably shooter's elbow or something, right? He just dropped twenty nine points. Let's see what that is, because he's actually our only decent rotation big man hopefully that'll be similar to Knox injury earlier in the year oh no 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 Stewart's the point guard why was I thinking I think Marcus Johnson is who I was thinking of all right so a strain calf another injury that's not terrible so that's all right look at the look at our uh, player impact estimate here well, we got a decent amount for rest of the team we got Marcus Johnson Mike Stewart coming in off the bench. Mike Stewart, the freshman, making an impact. You know, I, I thought this rating was absolute nonsense. Look at Mike Stewart, 11 points a game. Are you kidding me? Like, this is legit? <laughs> Let's look at our stats. Midseason stat break. Let's see what in the world's going on here. We got five, one, two, three, four, five guys averaging double digits. 
so they're hitting with 15 a game. So Khalid Knox is actually the weak link out of our guys that are getting heavy minutes as far as points and rebounds go. But I mean, uh, Mike Stewart clearly would be a great replacement. But, you know, we've got a, a nice three guard rotation going here. I guess you you know you could slide Villarreal over to the small forward and start uh, Hinton. But then who would we rotate in? Because Dixon, I mean, he's not playing that. Nobody else is playing that. Jerron White's actually playing a decent amount, and he's been pretty pedestrian. So, you know, right here, Knox and Jerron White are eating up some minutes and not getting us a whole lot of production. But, you know, we've got nobody down here to even really give a chance to, it seems. Uh, yeah, Hinton's starting at small forward. I was talking about... I was talking about uh, letting Griffin or Stewart run point, slide the other one to shooting guard, slide Villarreal to small forward, and then move Hinton from the starting small forward to the starting power forward. But I've already said it once. If it's not broke, don't fix it. If we had a great option to move around, fine. We don't. I'm shocked to see that freshman, Mike Stewart, putting up those kind of numbers. Um, I really did not believe that rating, but you know, there it is. So uh, it's working out. He's putting up double digits in points. We're going to let it roll. You know, I, I would totally do it, Agalia. Yeah, I would totally slide all those guys, but I just don't have, like, who else would I put into that guard rotation? We could try Frederick Dixon. He did okay last year. Um, I mean, I guess he couldn't be too much worse than Jerron White and Khalid Knox, but keep in mind, uh, Khalid Knox also is still a freshman, so, you know, he can he can develop. Well, those freshmen get a lot better throughout the year. Now, does getting Stewart on the court more, you know, the way he's already producing, would that be a good idea? Probably. Later, Blazer. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. Hope you check out the rest of this stream uh, on either on Twitch or on YouTube later on because this is going to finish strong. So yeah, you know the Stewart's already <clears throat> already producing as a freshman, whereas Knox really isn't doing great. But uh, I don't know. Just nervous to do too much when we've when we've really definitely had a great out of conference start here in conference. You know we're we won our home game and we lost our two road games, and one of the road games was pretty daggone close. Now, would I have liked to have won that one because they were a terrible team? Of course. So we're back at home with South Carolina State coming in. South Carolina State, so far in this save, uh, has been absolute garbage. But they look like they've got a pretty good record this year. Excuse me. Uh, they look like they're close to 500. So, again, we're not taking anything for granted. Uh, after all, we're still at Florida A&M, and we're only about – six months removed from a non-win season so no guarantees no promises but i do like our squad especially at home so far Let's see how we do with south carolina state coming in and we win nice 23 point game uh there's khalid knox not doing much of anything actually passing the ball and then look at marcus johnson with the double double there uh that rotational big man so you know we'll we'll take that We'll take that. We'll always take home wins. We're back to 500 in conference. Up to 12 wins on the year. Man, I'm having great fun. This has been the first one, and like the recruiting is always fun. I always love to see how that goes. The first handful of seasons, to be honest, streaming the games was every bit of a grind as it looked like. But I'm telling you guys, like this one's fun. <laughs> like We are winning some games here, and i got a lot of excitement. As we move, uh, as we move towards the postseason, I'm feeling great about this so far. Uh, hopefully, hopefully this holds up. Even 500 in conference is a good year. Hopefully, we keep up our play at home and can pick up some road wins. So, 
we'll see how this plays out as the season moves on. Uh, we're getting into late January now. So Bethune Cookman, once again, they've been our foil throughout most of this save. Coming in, and I can just feel it like the stars are all aligning. This is where our undefeated streak at home this year comes to a crashing halt. Bethune Cookman, <laughs> uh, do not care for them. As always, I am a Wildcat hater. Uh, doesn't matter which university Wildcats it is, I don't care for them. S get out of here, Bethune Cookman. We do not want you around. Get out of here, Bethune Cookman. 19 points. Oh, and they hurt two of our players. Of course they did. Playing dirty, just like a Wildcat. God. So that's four injuries we've had so far this year. We've been lucky with the other two. Cross your fingers for us. All right, sprained ankle, nine days. That's all right. Stewart's almost back from his. Oh, I'm scared to look. Okay, this is all also strained hamstring, 12 days. So they're all still around 90%. Uh, I have not seen... <laughs> I've not seen where playing injured players uh, causes any kind of like repeat injuries, anything like that. So I'm not worried about playing these guys as long as they're not too hurt. All of them will be back uh, before too long. Uh, so hopefully, I'd love to have that nice week of no games. Yeah, 13-5, and five, Chris. Look at this. We are having a great year. Uh, our non-conference, I think we were actually at 10 wins before we even got into the conference season. We were 10-3 and three in the non-conference season. So, so far, conference play has held up. We are 3-2. and two. We've had three home games, two road games. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, we definitely are going to have an opportunity to make some noise in the conference tournament this year. And then hopefully... You know, hopefully we win it and we, we make that big dance. If we don't, uh, I fully expect that we've got a possibility of getting into like the CTI, CIT, CBI. I don't know. I, I can't remember the initials on those. They start with a C. If you all are surprised, especially you, Agalia, you haven't been around long enough. Like I, I told you I was going to get this on track. It took me a minute, but we're moving forward, buddy. We're moving forward. We're, unless it absolutely implodes. Uh, I've already given him the rattler hiss a few times. Uh, but unless it absolutely implodes, we're hitting 15 wins. We can make a push for, sorry, did I say 15 or 18? Uh, I said something and I don't, like it just, I heard it in my ear and I can't even remember it. Uh, we should hit 15. We can make a push for 20. So I'm simulating just as fast as I can. I'm excited, guys. Here we go. Another one of these winnable, winnable road games against a bad Morgan State Bears team. Uh, again, I feel like every year Morgan State looks down. They look vulnerable. And then they beat us at their place. And then they come into our place and surprise us. So, you know, we, we've, had, uh, we've had a tough go against them. He <laughs> didn't believe yeah, seeing is believing, right? We've had a rough go of it, but you know we've had a better year. So let's see if we can have some better luck on the road at Morgan State. Yeah, a 20-point win. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Villarreal throwing down. Was that Khalid Knox right there with 10 and 7? I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there is the, there is that elusive conference road game that we've been looking for for quite some time you know like the alfred alfred whatever junior something memorial coliseum snake pit does sound cool sounds way scarier that sounds like uh some jake the snake stuff hey that belongs on our tew save chris we can get that snake pit over there we get y'all a real uh i'll get one of these streams i'll get y'all a tew real life mod we'll go back and play some 90s wrestling get our get our jake the snake snake pit on <laughs> you know, we might break their heart, Chris. Chris said in stream, or in chat rather, Chris said we're going to break the Rattler fan hearts. That may be true, 
but we have got them a s- relatively for their conference. We've stacked their roster, and we've got a four-star top 100 player coming in. They're still going to win some games long after we leave town. So, you know what? We're leave- when we leave, we'll leave the right way, one way or another. We're not getting fired. We're not taking a sideways move. So, here we go again. Uh, let's see if we can make it two in a row on the road. Headed to Norfolk State. They're 10 and 9, having a good conference year. Uh, two in a row on the road might be asking a little bit too much. And it is. 17 point loss. Uh, come back to earth there a little bit. Nobody really got, it looked like 11 points was our leading score. Um, so, not unexpected. Um, so this, this team, every game, raising the expectations, raising the bar. So it's I'm simulating games now with excitement instead of dread. Before it was like every game was like, oh, what's gonna happen? Now I'm excited about it, man. We we've got a shot in a lot of these road games, and we've held held serve at home. We had a couple of close ones, but we're holding serve, and that's all you can really ask. So, and are we gonna have another game here? One more for January. A little parting gift. Jason Anderson, who's a local Louisville radio personality. I think he went out to Kansas. <laughs> hey, next stream, I might have the Florida A&M gear on. This, this is old... Uh, PGA came to Louisville shirt, but it's got a big cardinal emblem on the back, just like that one. So, still rocking out the Louisville gear. I haven't converted over to a Rattler full-time yet. But definitely a part-time Rattler. They'll always be the same way, man. Every one of these teams that I've played a save with in this game has made me at least like pay attention to uh, games that those teams play. Like I've had seasons with New Mexico State, uh, Washington State, uh, Georgia, obviously, was a big one in 2020. Um, I'm trying to think if I had... Those were the three big ones. Like, I pay attention to New Mexico State and Washington State now. Uh, Georgia, I haven't had the opportunity because I hadn't been in college basketball since I started that save. Let's see here. So, we got NC Central coming in. They're 2-5 and five in conference, 8-12 and 12 overall. And this should be to close out our January. Look, this is Big Monday. You think this is on the Big Monday uh, ESPN lineup? And we got Louisville and Duke. And coming up later, Florida A&M versus NC Central. Big Monday. Can we do it at home? Yeah, 20-point win. The usual guys. Look at Hinton throwing down 20 points. Guys, we are having ourselves a season we went 5-3 and three in conference in January. We've hit 15 wins, which I believe it was either either 14 or 15 was the best we had done in a season, period. We're at 15, and we're not even into February yet. So 20 is definitely within reach. Uh, everything that we want to accomplish at Florida A&M in a season, it's all in reach. We are going to jump over and check out the standings here moving into February, see how we stand in this conference. <laughs> Kelly asked what my coach's um, uh, goals are for this season. I think it's like don't finish last. Uh, that one, we're safe. Yeah, don't finish last. That was it. We should be able to handle that. Again, uh, disasters can happen. But All right, so Delaware State is 8-0 in conference. And then we got this huge log jam at 5-3. and three. South Carolina State one and six, NC Central Eagles two and six. Um, I'm honestly hoping we don't have more than six losses in conference, so we shouldn't be last. Whether or not we can catch up with Delaware State, they look strong this year. I 
can't remember if we've played them. We can check. If only there were a schedule that I could just click and check. Oh, that's our next game. Going to Delaware State. Do we not play them at home? Am I missing this, guys? At Delaware State. It doesn't look like we played Delaware State at home. So this may be our only chance to put a dent in that pretty little record of theirs. So let's see what they've got. Let's see if we can stack up and make something happen here. It's a big game. You know, it, we've beat a handful of those other 5-3 and three teams. This would be a... I mean, on the road against the top team in the conference, the team is undefeated. This would definitely be uh, as close to a statement win as you can get at Florida A&M during the regular season, especially during the conference stretch of the season. All right, here we go. Delaware State, 17-4 and on the year, 8-0 in conference. Our only shot at taking down what looked to be the regular season favorites to win the conference. Can we go into Memorial Hall and bite the Hornets? <laughs> I was going to say sting, but I think that would be backwards of what we want to happen. So we're going to the Hornets. Oh, we did it. We did it. 89, 86. Take that, Delaware State. Whew. Florida a is going off, guys. We're going off. Wow. What a season we're having. That's crazy. Went into Delaware State, pulled off the big win. We are now 16-6, and 6-3 and three in conference. Guys, I couldn't, I wouldn't have believed you if you said this was going to turn out this way. I thought that this season would be better. But I didn't think it would be all of this. So we, we definitely got lucky with that freshman point guard. Yeah, they're the Hornets. So they win this, I guess, in your saves, they've won this a lot. I don't remember how they've done. You know, I've been foc so focused on like getting this team up and going and being so disappointed in all the other seasons, I couldn't pay attention in this save how they were doing. So, I assume you're probably talking about in your save, Delaware State's pretty good. So, you never know. We got the win against them. Uh, maybe you know, a couple of our conference mates knock them off and we can hold steady ourselves. And maybe we can give them a run for this conference. Uh, but we'll see. Again, we're, we're just past halfway through this conference slate of games. So we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves on anything. Uh, I, I would say we've safely avoided finishing last. We can take a quick look here. Look, there's, there's your Cardinals. The Ville, number three in the Norton. Uh, the Zags, obviously. Always looking strong. Yeah, they had a good record. They were undefeated in the conference. That was their first conference loss. Uh, the problem is we've already got three. So unless they had a great early schedule uh, or, you know, something changes or we just go on a ridiculous streak here, uh, I mean, three games is, is tough to catch up when you only got seven left. And we don't, you know, as far as I know, we don't have any like, discernible huge advantage or anything. But so we got Coppin State now at 12 and 10. Coming into the Alfred Lawson Jr. Multipurpose Center. Agalia doesn't care for that name. So, Coppin State coming into the Snake Pit. And we take care of business. 21 point win. Villarreal nearly dropped 30 on them. So, we are now 7 and 3 in conference. We are creeping up there, guys. This is an excellent year. Excellent, excellent year. I did not think 
it would turn around that quickly. I knew that I knew what the turning point was. I just didn't think it would happen that quickly. I still don't. I'm not completely sold that this is who we are. But I'll take it while it's here. You know, uh, not looking that gift horse in the mouth. We will take it while the taking's good. So 17 and 6, what is that, 23 games in. And we should have 6 or 7 to go. I can't remember if this is a, I always forget if this is 18 or 16 conference games. You know, if we don't play everybody in conference, it's, it might just be 16. Do we only have 6 games left? Let's go check. To the schedule machine. <clears throat> Let this get up. Check out our schedule. See how we finish off this year. So, six games. This is a 16-game conference schedule. Three at home, three on the road. All right. And with six games to go, we're still... Two and a half games back at Delaware State. So, you know, they've got to lose some games somewhere else. So we're not catching up to them. But uh, I think we're very safe. We'd have to lose out, basically, and, and have them win out to finish last. So we've clearly accomplished our coaches' goals. Clearly accomplished all my goals. Uh, obviously exceeded Agalia's goals and whatever the other uh, non-believers in chat had as far as their expectations for us this year. Uh, we're we're proving doubters wrong. We're hanging all that on the bulletin boards. Uh, that's why we slap as we run out onto the you know, Rattler Pit Arena or whatever we're calling it, the Snake Pit Arena Court. And that before you... <laughs> Before this thing would be processing and simming, and I could sit here and kind of look at other other guys, other teams, see what was going on. But now I'm just like, let's go! I want to get some games in. I'm ready to see. I'm ready to sim again. Oh. Six games. I'm ready to get it started. We ought to have, I think, a home game first, and then two on the road. Come on. Uh, I think it, it might be processing another round of like scouting reports and Norton reports and all that sort of all that sort of exciting stuff. So here we got Maryland Eastern Shore coming to Rattler Arena, the snake pit. We need to get all these names for their arena and send a list down to the school and let them look over it. I think they could get a lot of mileage out of this. So, Maryland Eastern Shore won the first game at their uh, at their home arena. Now they're coming to Florida A and M. Twenty two point victory. Look at Montgomery throwing down thirty. Man, oh man, we have had a handful of dominating performances out of Villarreal, uh, out of Montgomery. Uh, you know. Hinton has thrown in his fair share. Um, Griffin has just been consistent, like on that 15 to 20 points. Now, I think he's averaging 15 a, a game. So just, man, what a year. What a start. God, we still got five games to go, and we're only two games away from 20. This is... We've already doubled last year's win total. Great turnaround. Loving to see this. So now we're headed to Howard. Uh, so again, uh, we've gone back and forth with Howard. They don't look like a great team this year, but road games are always difficult in conference. The only thing that gives me a little bit of optimism, we've had a lot of sweeps. Either Howard sweeps us or we sweep them. 
So can we hold on to that streak? Yes, we can. 12 points. We are getting it done this year, folks. The Rattlers are getting it done. And that's a heck of a record. I realize we haven't beat anybody, but man, at what point do you have to look at a team out of a conference like this and start considering them for the NIT? Because normally I wouldn't think that would even be possible. But 19 and 6, I mean, they're, they're putting up wins, guys. I say we just take that completely out of their hands, run this conference tournament, hit the big dance, make some waves. Let's do it all this year. Let's do it all right here tonight. It's February 18th. I'm sitting here quite literally bouncing in my seat. This is awesome. This is awesome. Tulane ECU battle there. <clears throat> We're always getting some battles out of those guys. It's like Tulane and ECU and Tulsa. You know, all the regulars there on a little circuit of games that always pop up and finish simulating last. Yeah, Chris, I think we're making the real turn. I think we're... Uh, I think we're going to our way right into that NCAA. We're going to call it the NCAA this year. What do you think about that? All right, North Carolina A&T coming in. 10 and 16. They are over 500 in the conference, so definitely a dangerous team. And we're still taking care of business at home. Nice 18. Who is, oh, Jerron White. So there was the guy who really <laughs> slithered right in. Yeah, we're going to slither right into that tournament. Uh, so there was Jerron White having himself a game. So that's nice to see. He was definitely on our list of guys that, that weren't really producing earlier in the year. Uh, so great to see everybody contribute a little bit. So we got three games left. And I think, did, was that number 20? That was number 20, right? Guys, have we won 20 games? <laughs> we sure have. 20 wins on the season for your Florida A&M Rattlers. Still two games back at Delaware State. So we're probably not winning the regular season. But we definitely have as good a chance as anybody else in this conference of winning some games on a neutral court and making something happen in that conference tournament. So three regular season games left to go. And then it is on. We see, uh, you know, we, cards on the table. You know, whatever, whatever analogy you want to you want to use uh, we're going all in you know the nice thing is you know, we have it's been a couple of weeks now we have gotten past that little injury bug that we had uh, none of them were that serious luckily so we're healthy again that's a big help so hopefully can we get another road win? South Carolina State, I've talked about it. Usually a little down in the conference, but road wins are very tough. <laughs> Usually road wins are very tough. Look at Mike Stewart again popping up for 18. We are doing... Yeah, we, we've won quite a bit on the road this year, and these road games have been so tough in this save, and I, I just... I'm blown away by how well we've done this year. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. At this point, like it's just, all right, let's hold tight on this regular season. Don't let anything bad happen, and let's see what happens in the tournament because this team is on a roll. Two more games to wrap it up in the regular season.
And there's another ECU game. That time against UConn. Ooh, Brian Scales with 16 rebounds. That's quite a night on the board. On the boards. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a big, big conference tournament for sure. And here we go to Bethune-Cookman. I don't believe we've won at Bethune-Cookman yet in this save. As always, constant thorn in our side. So let's see if we can slither on how to here with a, a win. It, you know, they're not, they're below 500 on the year. Probably above it in conference would be my guess. Oh no, they're 6 and 8 in conference. Oh, a two point win there. Look at Eric Griffin with the double double with assists. This is ridiculous, guys. I straight up would not believe that this team were 22 and 6, 12 and 3 in conference. That's amazing. Absolutely ridiculous. I realize y'all didn't believe it would be this good. I knew it would be better. This is incredible. Man, oh man, what a season for Florida A&M. What a season. This has been exciting. It's fun to win some of these games, not only on the road, but win some, you know, some of those close home games. Have a great out of conference, great in conference, and now time to throw down in the tournament. One more regular season game to get through. Would love to finish it off strong. Finish it on this nice, uh, nice up, you know, up note, high note, up tempo, up swing, whatever you want to call it. Let's not overlook the last regular season game. Because we won 22 games before we even got into March. So, that's a good year. And you see there, Delaware State, 14-1 and one in conference. So they're not losing any games. Uh, they've got the conference wrapped up. So here comes Morgan State. And again, this is a team that always has a record that looks pretty similar to this. And they've upset me or surprised me one too many times. So I'm not taking anything for granted, but we hold it off. 22 point win again and guys I didn't want to jinx it I didn't I wasn't going to bring it up I was keeping my eye on it it was in the back of my head I noticed it when we went to the standings but now we move into the conference and we move into you know all neutral court games and that sort of thing uh we went undefeated at home 15 and 0 on the year we went 8 and 6 on the road which is Amazing, but we went 15 and 0 at home. So, really, really exciting year for Florida A&M. Finished two games behind Delaware State in the conference, but we're second overall. So, now here we go. Every other year, it's just been hoping and crossing fingers for some wins in March, for you know a win or two in the conference tournament to get us to 10 or get us to 15 wins. Uh, now we're looking. Make some noise. Let's win this conference tournament and head to the dance. Are we top 64? I didn't even see RPI. No, we didn't. We didn't beat Delaware State twice. We only beat them once. Let's see here. Here's Delaware State. They only have one conference loss. They're 15 and 1 in conference. So the only conference game they lost was when we went to their place and beat them. We only played them one time. We didn't get a home game against them. It's a it's a 16 game conference schedule, so there's got to be two teams that we don't play twice, I believe. Yeah, we only got one matchup against them. We were looking at that earlier.
23 and 6. That's pretty crazy, guys. Uh, pretty exciting regular season, but none of it matters now. College basketball, you know, regular season, it's nice, you know. You, you build up that RPI, you get seedings for, for postseason tournaments and all that stuff, but it's all about this postseason. So let's see who we match up with. Let's get some of these emails out of the way. Players declaring for draft. Whew, nobody went. Worried about that one. Let's also pop over and take a look, see what. Now look at everybody's mood now. Oh, shoot, that's Delaware State. Never mind. I was going to say, that's crazy. All right, they all still hate me. <laughs> but look, he's jumped up like 12, 15 points on the year. So that coach relationship definitely seems to have some correlation with wins and losses. Uh, this, Except for with this guy, he hates everybody. Uh, I can't imagine he'll be here next year, but uh, it was fun for two years while he was here. You know, he's... Going 12 and 6 a game. So he's, you know, maybe earned his shot. Moving on up. Let's take just another quick look because depending on how this postseason goes, I'll either be ecstatic or devastated, and I'll forget to look later. So uh, here you can see, looked like the whole season went about like the first half did. We've still got five guys averaging double digits. Uh, Griffin is actually one of the lower ones. Uh, Villarreal has been everything we could have hoped for. Mike Stewart came out of nowhere. And even Hinton. Hinton is our leading scorer. And he didn't do anything last year. So, you know, one of those guys, and he wasn't getting a ton of playing time, so maybe that's somewhat on me. Uh, but also sometimes guys just, the light bulb goes on their senior year. You know, I can remember guys like that at Louisville, like in real life Louisville, where it just seems like they're just sort of along for the ride, and then they hit their senior year, and they find some other universe. Uh, and that's what he appears to have done. Now, I was downplaying Knox a little bit earlier, but taking a look at this, he's actually the leading rebounder on the team as a freshman. So maybe not a huge uh, effect scoring, and not by too much. I mean, Montgomery's still good, but you know, not bad for a freshman. I'll take that. Johnson's also hitting the boards in his 20 minutes a game. So there's our stats. Depending on how this goes, we may not see them again. But let's get into this conference tournament, guys. Uh, you can see here we don't even play in this first round, which that's a first. <clears throat> All right, we got to leave the confines of the snake pit, the Rattler Arena, and we're headed out to play Norfolk State. All right, what can we do? I'll tell you what we can't do is overlook any of these teams. No off days, guys. I'm going to give them their little speech, right? Let's get them. Let's, the Spartans are going to be snake bit, we hope. Again, we might uh, switch over to the tournament bracket uh, once we get a little further. I want to see these games. Oh, yeah, we could do the... Let's, let's see the games. I'm not messing with it. It's working so far. I'm not messing with it. Come on, baby. Three-point win. <laughs> but a win. A three-point win. Yes, sir. All right. So now, the very next day, we get Coppin State. Oh, my goodness. That was a close one. Three points. We hadn't had a three-point game in like a month. I don't think it, it hadn't been single digits in a long, long time. All right. So, Delaware State headed into the, the final game of the tournament. Can we join them? Ah, oh, we fall. <laughs> Coppin State. No way. We bit the dust. Totally choked. 
four-point loss to Coppin State in the semifinals of the conference tournament. That's brutal, guys. We were right there. We were right there. Win that game, win this game, and we're dancing. Ah! And just like that, our dreams are shattered. Uh, so now, you know, it's all about seeing if we still uh, if we still make uh, some type of other postseason tournament. I got to think at 24 and 7, we're at least in the CBI or CIT, I would hope. Um, God, that sucks. Would have at least liked to pick up, you know, two wins in that conference tournament. You know, even the first game was close. You know, conference tournament, anything can happen. Our, our regular season was absolutely ridiculous. Come back to earth a little bit now. Uh, but hopefully we've still got a chance to play some more basketball, so we'll see how it plays out. Let's get on to Selection Sunday. We can check out that bracket as it comes out. And then, you know, and we'll go slow, just in case we're a play-in or one of those 16 seeds or something, but... Uh, virtual lock that that's not happening. Um, but I fully expect to still have another chance to play basketball this year. And we're probably, you know, obviously uh, Hinton as a senior, These are this is probably his last couple of games. And the way Montgomery's attitude looks, it's probably also his last couple of games here. So probably losing two of these starters uh, we definitely have got some big-time help coming at small forward next year. So that shouldn't be the end of the world. Um, but you know, we're going to have to find a way to replace Montgomery at center. So let's just hope that... Uh, did we... Sorry, we went past that. Coppin State did beat Delaware State there in that final. So Delaware State is not dancing. Let's play out these games. And enjoy our selection Sunday. Looks like Cincinnati won their conference tournament. So let's check out the selection show. Mm -mm. All right. So we're going to take a look and see how the NCAA tournament is looking. Uh, and then, you know, as usual, uh, once we win whatever tournament we're in, I'll bounce over and we can check out the the actual NCAA tournament and how it goes. So let's go through here. We got Jackson State and Lipscomb, Elon Gardner Webb. All right, so there's all Kansas in a play-in game. Ouch. Uh, so there's some more Wildcats that we don't care for. Gonzaga. UAB with a three seed. Number five in the nation, UAB Blazers at 33-2. and two. Okay, interesting. And NC State with the four. It's the cards with the five. All right, so here in Kansas City, we get the Tar Heels with the one seed. Another Wildcat with the two. West Virginia, the three. And Nova with the four. In Dallas, Oklahoma Sooners grab a one seed. Maryland with the two. UC with the three. And Oklahoma State with the four. And in Phoenix, St. John's, number seven in the nation, grabs a one seed. Vandy with the two. Syracuse with the three. And there's Coppin State. With that 14 getting the auto bid, so uh, definitely we could have been in that realm. But we actually had a better season, a better regular season than Coppin State, so we'd have been, we could have even got a 13 uh, it, had we won that conference tournament. And the Michigan Wolverines grabbed the four here. So there is your NCAA tournament. So now let's see. We should hopefully have an email. It tells us we're playing somewhere. 
Let's see what we got. Washington State. The NIT. Yes, sir. So that's the best we that we could have hoped for. I, I didn't know if we had a realistic shot at, a, at, a, at the NIT, but it certainly looks like we did. And we get to go up against Washington State, which, as I was explaining to you a little bit earlier in the stream, is a team that uh, I had actually coached a number of seasons with in a prior save. So I do want to take a look at one thing since we, you know, we had the hiccup against Coppin State. I want to see, I wanted to look at some of these reports earlier in the year, and I just got, like, really, um, I, I don't know, I got superstitious or something and didn't want to look at them. So well, we didn't have any kind of advantages over them. I wonder what that looks like in some of these other games. Yeah, the conference tournament meant everything for the NCAA for sure. In a conference like this, and an out of... If I would have had a halfway decent... Alright, so... It looks like this isn't any good to... it. Oh, wait. Norfolk State was another close game. Uh, a conference like this with the out-of-conference schedule that I played isn't getting an at-large to the NCAA ever. So, I mean, Bethune Cookman looked like they should have beaten us down. I'm just seeing if any of these, like if we had a big advantage or if these scouting reports are showing us as an underdog in all of these games, which it appears to be. We actually favored to win that one by a bit, but we trounced them. So, uh, I was looking at all that to say I want to look at the report on this one, but it doesn't look like the reports are giving us a great idea. And, of course, Washington State, they're, they're showing up with a fairly big advantage here. Looks like their best player is this point guard that they've slid no, slided, slid, moved to the two guard. <laughs> um, but we look through here. I mean, points per game, we were doing a heck of a lot better. Points against was pretty similar. Field goal percentage is a lot better. And stats wise, you know, per game, we did a lot better. But of course, they're against competition in the pack uh we're in the mid atlantic eastern miac something so not surprising but uh we're gonna go ahead let's see let's play out any other games going on today and then let's see if we can win an nit game guys now this would be a win against a p5 a power five program uh, of course it's neutral court so um I still think anything can happen. Cross your fingers for me. Cross your toes. We lost the conference game. We, we didn't get to win the conference tournament. Let's pick this up. This would be a really cool win for the program. You got this. Damn. God, we lost by 11. Mm. I mean, not shocking against, uh, against a Power 5 team that you know is in... A postseason tournament, but definitely frustrating. I had such high hopes for this postseason. We end up just going one and two. You know, had that close conference game, then the loss that was kind of surprising. You know, this isn't as surprising. Uh, definitely good to see that we can at least get to the NIT out of this conference, even with a rather weak uh, out of conference schedule. So, you know, they they beat us pretty good. Montgomery still had a, had his double double, you know. Knox pretty much hit his rebounding average. Uh, you know, Griffin and Villarreal. You know, nobody exploded point wise. Looks like Stewart, the freshman there that we had talked about playing a little bit more, uh, he went in, played twenty minutes, got three points, and he he did nothing. God, look at Villarreal's plus minus. Minus 23. Yikes. I, 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 wow. I don't know how you do that. Must have just been out on the court for one big run or something. All right, so that's our season. Let's get over here to the NCAA and see how these brackets work themselves out and then see, uh, see how the season ends. Uh, so let's get... This is just NIT nonsense at the beginning. We'll simulate all the way to Sunday and then kind of take a review of how the first two rounds went. And same as always.
Man, I'm so disappointed. We couldn't get one more postseason win. It will be interesting to see how the prestige changes just like making the NIT, even though we didn't win any games in it. I mean, our prestige was four. So, I, I don't know. It'll be interesting. But still, 24 and 8 on the year. Man, it, how cool would it have been to get to 25? Uh, so, looks like some of our first round games filled out there. <clears throat> I mean, you go from nine wins to 24. It's a 13 point or a 13 win turnaround season over season. That's you're talking a historic turnaround there. You know, that's ridiculous. So, definitely a big improvement there. Let's see how all of this finishes out. And see if that's enough to get anybody to notice us and offer us an interesting job. <laughs> Chris said he's going to fire up his journeyman save here in a little bit. All right. Oh, we still got Sunday games to play. And then we can take a look at how the first couple of rounds have gone. So here in, which are we in East Rutherford? So we got the number one seed, Kentucky. The number 13 seed, Kentucky. California Polytechnic Institute upset NC State in the first round upset my Cardinals in the second round they'll face the Wildcats in the Sweet 16 uh, Gonzaga makes it UAB fell to UC Irvine so the 11 seed UC Irvine will face the Zags in the Sweet 16 here in Kansas City North Carolina Villanova both hold serve Arizona hold serve chaos over here Boise State upset I guess you can call it an upset. A higher-seeded South Carolina upstate. But North Dakota State, the 14, knocks off the three West Virginia. So they move on out here, and Boise State will face the Arizona Wildcats in the Sweet 16. In Dallas, Oklahoma holds serve. Uh, Loyola upset Oklahoma State. Couldn't get past Dayton. Wichita State came out and upset the Maryland Terrapins. And Kansas State over Southeast Louisiana. Hey, uh, Chris, is is that is that uh, RC's team? This Southeast Louisiana thing? I can't remember. But they upset UC, fell to Kansas State. So there's your Dallas region. And in Phoenix, number one St. John's versus number twelve Samford Bulldogs, who upset Virginia Commonwealth and then upset the Michigan Wolverines. Then we've got Washington that beat the two seed Vandy will face the three-seed Syracuse in the Sweet 16. So quite a bit of interesting outcomes there to get us to our Sweet 16. Uh, I love seeing those upsets. It's always a whole lot of excitement. I want to see, though, if any of these, you know, outside of the top four or five seeds, if any of these other teams can actually get into the Final Four or the championship game. I very, very rarely see it. All right, I knew it was a directional something or other, so I don't guess Southeast Louisiana. Okay, I had RC's save uh, school incorrect. I just saw it pop up. I'm like, that, that might be it. You know, he's Cajun, so I thought it went with the Louisiana thing. All right, so uh, St. John's and Syracuse in the Elite Eight, Oklahoma and Kansas State. North Carolina, Arizona, Kentucky, and the Zags. Did they not? I missed. Where was Coppin State? They were 14 somewhere. Yeah, they got beat by 19 by Syracuse. And we didn't fare too awfully much better against Washington State. So, can't talk too much trash. Looks like the Arizona Wildcats will be headed to the Final Four. So what? That was a two seed over a one. Uh, so not a... Not a very big upset or anything going on here. Let's see how the... Oh, let's... Actually, let's sim one more day. we got to get all of the Elite Eight games in. Ha! UK lost. St. John's into the Final Four. So, we'll have couple of two seeds and a couple of one seeds not a whole lot you know those first two rounds are chaos and now it's looking like all chalk in the final four and that's pretty much 
uh, how it always goes in real life. So true to life, whole lot of excitement in the opening weekend and a whole lot of pretty much what we expected, at least seating wise. Uh, it is interesting to see St. John's out there as the two. All right, so a couple games left here until we get to the end of this season. Very interested to see how this goes. Not only job wise, you know, we're like I said before, we're probably not getting any jobs off of one decent regular season, but I am interested to see how that uh, season affects our school prestige. All right, so we should get our final four games today. Looks like the Zags lost and Oklahoma won. So we have Arizona and Oklahoma. Is that who Gonzaga was playing against? Well, show me the finals. Come on. <laughs> Arizona and Oklahoma. So... Everything east of the Mississippi has been eliminated. Well, the Wildcats and the Sooners play for the national championship. And Arizona takes it. Look at Antonio Kraft, 32 points. So your Arizona Wildcats win the national championship. Now, what we should get this year. Last year, I think we got some of these end-of-year awards. Uh, this year, I fully expect... Go ahead. Uh, that should be ours this year. Now, it'll be interesting to see who gets the rest of the awards. Take a brief look here at our national awards individually. There's Kraft. We, you know, we expect that. The Zags, Mark Few gets coach of the year you know, for another Final Four. Once again, you know, they got close and no cigar. The Zags are constantly in the Final Four in this save and, and haven't won yet. There's Alex Bass from Louisville. Brett Warhank from Purdue. All right, so nothing too awfully exciting there nationally. Let's take a look in. Jeez, I cannot even remember. What is this? Metro Mid-American Conference? Mid-Eastern Athletic? Yeah, Mid-Eastern Athletic. They didn't give me Coach of the Year. This is nonsense. That's ridiculous. There's no way they made the kind of turnaround we did. No way. I call foul, sir. So we get locked out of the yearly uh, individual awards. First team all conference. Nothing. This. We are getting hosed. Craig Montgomery, second team all American. That's it. That, guys, was a ripoff. We got hosed in the awards filing a protest. Man, I might have to stick around at Florida A&M just to shove this down the throats of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference trying to mess with us. Do not care for it. Alright, let's check it out. We ought to have uh, job offers coming up if we have any. We also have, we get our review now, right? Season review. Don't finish last in the conference. We got that one taken care of. Angry guy Montgomery. Yeah, that's very true. I guess he's a squeaky wheel. So, oh, here, have an award. Does that make you happier? I guarantee it didn't make him happier. He's still very frowny faced. He can't stand anybody. His guy's out of here. We won't have him next year, which is a real shame. Because I'm going to look at everything else coming back. Let's take a look at my office. <laughs> now they want us to win the conference tournament. They go from don't finish last to, oh, that was a good year. How about we win the conference tournament and win 15 games? Uh, we'll see how it goes at center. 15 games. If we don't win 15 games, I would be surprised and disappointed. Win the conference tournament. Obviously, you never know how that's going to work out. Take a look over at school info. 
Team Prestige jumped up to a 10. So 10 isn't high. It's quite a bit higher than 4. So that's a nice a nice jump, a nice step in the direct, right direction for the school. Let's see uh, what... Oh, hold on before we look at that. I want to look at one last thing over here. I don't know if y'all looked at that. I, I turned my head away so I wouldn't see. Uh, let's see. We're up above 50 in recruiting. 43 scouting, 47 development, 42 offense, and 47 defense. So we're, we're definitely getting there. And reputation still poor, but it has jumped up to 16. I think that was at like 10, 11, maybe 12 at best. So uh, given that ranking, we're probably not getting any kind of interesting head coaching jobs. Okay, so we actually got a handful here. Duquesne, Texas State, Western Michigan, and Wyoming. So, you know, there, are, all of those are definitely better jobs than the one that we're at. Uh, and, you know, the, in some conferences I at least recognize, I recognize the Mountain West, I recognize the A-10. I don't know that any of those are schools that, that we... Uh, have in mind for staying at for the rest of our career you know none of that looks like our forever job uh any comments in chat speak now or forever hold your peace because i'm not digging any of this although texas state in the Sun Belt is kind of interesting you know that just that region and wyoming almost for the same re the same reason like who else is fighting for recruits in wyoming in state at least so uh, none of that is what we're looking for. We're going to hold tight here with Florida A&M for another season. See what happens. So we're moving on past that. Appreciate the offers, guys. I uh, think we'll see if we can't do it again next year. Raise that profile up a little bit and get a different, a different quality of job offers. Any of those schools, we'd just be starting from completely nothing again. You know, at least here, you know, we've got a good foundation built even if montgomery leaves we've still got a good foundation i guess i should start saying when he leaves i don't know uh let's see staff do we need to hire staff yeah we do so we're gonna do that next time guys this has been almost a two-hour stream i'm gonna go ahead and save it here guys thank you all for stopping by uh <laughs> that was a fun one a lot of wins didn't get it done in the postseason, though, and, you know, that's what you absolutely have to do. So we're going to lose Hinton. We've got a good small forward coming in to take his place, but assuming that Montgomery transfers, we're going to have a big gaping hole there at the five. Of course, that assumes nobody else transfers out. You know, if Griffin or uh, anyone else that has kind of rotten attitudes transfers out, uh, we could be looking at a really big rebuild. You know, he's... He's got a good relationship with the team. He's getting better with me. But still a big red frowny face. Stewart. Why does Stewart hate me? And this guy, see this is what I don't understand. He's got an average person now. Oh, expect starters minutes. Yeah, well that would make sense. So he hates me. Everybody hates me. That one's actually my fault. I should have checked how many. Once I realized he was actually playing well, I should have checked how many minutes he wanted. So that one is 100% on me. Griffin, I don't necessarily understand. Dixon probably wants playing time. Yeah. So who knows how these how these will go. I think I already saved it once, but I'm going to save it again. Guys, thank you all for stopping by. Uh, make sure that you check in next time. We'll see what we do as far as coaching hiring. We will get – actually, you know what? I'm going to do the coach hiring offline uh, because we've got a long sim to process the offseason. So I'll do it as usual. I'll pick it up uh, with the first day of next year. We can – review the transfers and then uh, start off with recruiting the transfers so i uh, really appreciate you guys stopping by make sure that you're checking us out on gm games on the twitch on the youtube all that good stuff but uh, i'll see y'all next time